Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Welcome to part two of our big summer blowout. Woohoo! Big summer blowout. Today we'll be taking one last slog through the bottom of the barrel. One last spin down the drain of the cinematic toilet. We're going to name the top five worst movies of the summer of 2015. Now, as a caveat, this list is about quality, or rather, the lack thereof. I'm not going to rank movies by how much money they made or lost. One of these films made a billion dollars this year. That's billion with a B. But most of them were as unsuccessful at the box office as they were at entertaining audiences. One of them was a flop in the US, but did so well internationally that we might actually see a sequel. <sighs> While watching this video, if I get to a movie that I already reviewed for this show, an icon will appear, allowing you to click on it and watch the original review for more information. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. The top five worst movies of summer 2015. Let's get started with number five, Minions. I am really sick of these guys, I'm not gonna lie. They simply can't carry a movie. They're not well-drawn characters. They don't have anything resembling a story arc. And without Gru and his daughters to do the narrative and emotional heavy lifting, they're left just doing physical comedy shtick rather than affecting the outcome of the plot. They're cute, and boy do they sell merchandise. But putting them front and center was a bad idea. Oh, and am I a pervert, or are these supposed to be boobs? And was that a thong back there? This movie's supposed to be for kids, right? Number four is, uh, hold on, back to Minions. Minions made over a billion dollars worldwide. That's not counting merchandising or ancillary rights. That's actual butts in actual seats. So people deep within Universal Studios and Illumination Entertainment probably disagree with me that this movie was a bad idea. But hey, you want me to review the movie or the money? Because between the two of those things, I only saw the movie. Number four is Pixels, which is what happens when you have a great visual idea. Earth under attack by giant video game characters but virtually nothing else. No great characters, no inspired comedic ideas, no devices to advance the plot, and a lead actor who looks like he gives zero craps about the whole endeavor, and you decide to go ahead and make the movie anyway. I love the films of director Chris Columbus, and I hope his next movie is better. Now, I've been saying that since he directed Rent 10 years ago, and I'm still keeping the faith. Number three is Terminator Genesis, which took an etch-a-sketch to the movie continuity that we know and love from the previous movies and replaced it with a muddled bunch of gobbledygook that contradicts its own logic. That's when it bothers to explain anything at all. I walked out of this movie shaking my head in disgust. I wasn't entertained, I didn't understand the purpose behind the major changes to the franchise's storyline, and I felt jerked around by the last second promise of further intrigue to come in a hypothetical sequel that no one is asking for. No one asked for this movie either. Paramount was apparently planning for this film to kick off a new trilogy of Terminator films with this cast and this plot continuity. And in their arrogance, they allegedly decided to hold off explanation of certain plot points until they were addressed in these future hypothetical sequels. Instead of giving us a complete movie the first time, they even chose a release date for this sequel of May 19th, 2017. You know what they say when you assume Paramount? Oh, and guess what? Just when you thought the poor box office performance of this movie would scuttle those lame trilogy plans, the film has been doing insane numbers overseas, actually putting the possibility of a sequel back on the table. Thanks a lot, China! The second worst movie of summer 2015 is Hitman, Agent 47. And this at least cost much less than the other movies on this list, represented no huge loss of money, and was relatively easy to ignore. At best, it played like watching someone else play an unrealistic video game, and at worst, it was a muddled mess which tossed out plot developments, twists, and revelations with all the enthusiasm of a blackjack dealer at 1 a.m. Uh, you got a hit man and a woman. You want to hit or stay? Hit? 
All right, the guy helping to protect the woman from the hitman is actually the bad guy. Hit or stay? Hit. The hitman and the woman are related. Hit or stay? My advice regarding Hitman Agent 47 is to fold. And the worst movie of summer 2015 is Fantastic Four. What can I say here that wasn't already said in my initial review? Oh, nothing, except I was right! My suspicions that I laid out in my review have been confirmed. Articles released since the movie flopped have detailed the troubled production in depth and reports from the set say that yes, the director Josh Trank actually directed the cast to make their performances as flat as possible. He attempted to make the movie more grounded and realistic. In the process, he made a film completely lacking in dynamics, excitement, or fun. Fantastic Four isn't even a beautiful looking failure due to the bleak, scorched aesthetic he employed. Again, in the service of realism. So it doesn't even work as a guilty pleasure or as a missed opportunity. There is literally no way, not even a drinking game, to make this movie fun. Fantastic Four is empty, ugly, and boring. And that's the last word I'm going to say about it before I go about forgetting everything about it. Done. Woo! That was a load off my mind. Before we go, I would like to give out two awards for the summer of 2015, the Most Valuable Player and Least Valuable Player of Summer. First, the Most Valuable Player. While I was tempted to give this award to newcomer Alicia Vikander, who gave two very different but both very sexy turns in Ex Machina and The Man from Uncle, I cannot ignore the feat accomplished this summer by composer extraordinaire Michael Giacchino. Despite the fact that I mispronounced his name once during my Tomorrowland review, and I have been kicking myself the whole time, I have long been a fan of his work, and I consider him one of the top five film composers working today. This summer, he accomplished the amazing feat of scoring three major motion pictures in the same summer and due to delays with the respective record labels, had the unique distinction of having all three soundtrack albums drop within a week of each other. Tomorrowland, Inside Out, and Jurassic World. If, like me, you had pre-ordered them all from Amazon.com, there was one day when the mail brought a whole lot of Giacchino goodness. Three wildly different scores, two of them for movies that ended up on my top 10 best movies of 2015 list, and one of them, Tomorrowland's big, brassy, optimistic swells being the best thing about that movie. In the same short time period, he'd provide Inside Out's wildly variant roller coaster of emotion and Jurassic World's bold adventure score that incorporated just enough of John Williams' classic score to successfully build on it but made it his own, much as he did when scoring the last two Star Trek movies. Now, due to some legal mumbo jumbo, I can't use any of his music as an example here, but trust me, if you want to go on an emotional journey, put on the Inside Out soundtrack album, probably the best score of his career, and help yourself to a hot cup of Giacchino. Tell him the Colonel sent ya. And now, the summer's least valuable player. Oh, the lovely and talented Judy Greer. She's such a ubiquitous actress. She has made a career out of playing the funny best friend in romantic comedies, so much so that the title of her memoir is I Don't Know What You Know Me From. But one thing you won't know her from is Ant-Man or Jurassic World. In both movies, she was just a placeholder. She was given very little, if anything, to do and definitely nothing worthy of her considerable talents. I'm always happy to see deserving actresses just getting work and paying the bills, but this marginalization of the talented Judy Greer, it will not stand, man! That officially wraps our coverage of the summer of 2015, but stay tuned for the third part of our Big Summer Blowout when we take a look at 15 films that I'm looking forward to in the fall of 2015. This has already been a year for the books, and we're only getting started. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up below. And if you want to nominate one of your least favorite movies of this past summer, please leave it in the comments. 
Remember, it's best to be a subscriber. It's free, it's low calorie, it's good for your blood pressure, and it's just a click away. Click the icon to subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Bye!